Beside the old poor law building in Chandwell is Wallower Lane, which bends out towards Market Street. This lane occupies only 26 millimetres of my layout's back scene. Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael, and I'm building the back of a commercial street for behind my station. Join me as I show you how I made one side of Wallower Lane in Making a Forced Perspective Alley. I was in Dewsbury a few weeks ago and I saw this alleyway which caught my imagination. It bends part way along, which means that you can't see where it leads. I thought something like this would be perfect for the back scene of a model railway. I decided I would build it. I started in the free drawing application, Inkscape. Using the side of the building, I drew on a horizon line at about two thirds of the way up the building. Most of the filming I do in Chandwell is from about this height, so it makes sense to have the horizon around about here. I drew a couple of lines to a vanishing point, and then chose a place at more or less random to act as the end of the wall. In Inkscape you can do perspective by drawing a four-sided shape starting at the bottom left corner and progressing in a clockwise direction. Once done, I then took a section of building, selected the shape I'd drawn, and then used the perspective tool to fit the building face into the perspective shape. I printed the resulting shape onto sticky label and then stuck this to serial packet. I taped the shape onto the side of the building and I put it on the layout. It was far from perfect, but I thought that it showed promise. Now to add the bend part way along. I drew two separate shapes similar to what I did earlier and fit two different building sections into them. On the layout, it felt that the approach would work. Two windows and four windows worked well. Three windows and four worked better. Three windows and three worked better still. I tried various different angles to see what kind of approach worked best. I think that this works from several different angles. If I keep the next building up the hill slightly proud of the poor law building, then the odd perspective of the short side will not be visible from the station end of the layout. If I get the spacing right at the back, there will be an enticing gap that shows the lane continuing onto Market Street, but Market Street itself will remain a mystery. This is the distance and angles that I settled on. It's about 26 millimeters from the back scene and about 35 millimeters long. I was surprised when filming this that the effect looks good even when just laid flat on my desk. But it's time to rip it off and do it properly. Using measurements taken from the layout, I designed a shape to represent the horizontal ribs that will support the building. I was pleased that I'd made these the right length, but the stepped nature of the building up the hill meant that there was not a single horizontal line which avoided all the windows. I checked the alignment on the layout to make sure the building will be more or less parallel to the tracks. I chopped the supports into pieces and started adding them with PVA. I clamped them to an engineer's square to hold them upright and in place. I continued in this manner until I had a latticework rib cage for the building. The structure is rock solid. I cut the two side components from half millimetre card using my scalpel. These windows on the short side are tiny, they are less than 2mm wide. The thin card makes a neat join to the front face when added to the supporting rib. You may notice I had to sit the supports a bit proud of the edge. This is because I wanted the card sides to join to the front face of the 2mm thick building frontage, rather than the back. I think that this is going to work well. I used PVA glue and just dropped the pieces into place. The effect will be ruined if I can't make the stonework of the building follow the same perspective as the window arrangement. The perspective tool in Inkscape does not work with bitmap images like the stone texture, so I needed to export the perspective wall parts as an image, and then load this and the correctly proportioned patch of texture into the free online tool Photopia. I could then use the freeform adjust tool to drag the texture into shape until it exactly matched the perspective piece underneath it. With the resulting image back in Inkscape, I could then arrange them against each other. And finally, print out a patch of texture that should hopefully match the pieces of card already in place. I'm going to have a downspout just here, so I can glue the patch of texture along this line and the join will eventually be hidden. I used PVA glue and slid the texture into place. 
Once that had dried, I used more PVA to smooth the texture around the face of the building. I had already scored and folded the texture in the right places. Holding the building up to the light, I sliced my scalpel through the windows from front to back. I folded the resulting flaps around the edges and glued them into place. I wasn't sure how accurate the Photopia approach to adding perspective to the texture would be, and I wasn't sure how much paper would be needed to complete the various folds. Because of this, I couldn't add lintels and sills onto the printed texture itself, as they may not align properly. I'd therefore need to add them by hand. Oh gosh, these are tiny. So before facing that task, I used the sticky label method to create window frames that follow the correct perspective, and held them into place with black tape. These look good. Even though you can hardly see them, they're that small. So back to these sills and lintels. I had to use a pin to transfer them from my cutting mat to the building. But the effort was worthwhile. I think they give a subtle sense of 3D and they enhance the overall effect of the forced perspective. Surprisingly, I only lost one during this process. I just added a white bit of paper and coloured it in with a pastel pencil. It took a few mock-ups to get to something that I was happy with, but I think it looks great. With the other side in place and some pipes and bins and general filth, it should look super. I can't do much more for now until the rest of the building is complete. I'm moving upwards next, onto the four separate hipped roofs and the chimneys. Join me next time to see how I get on with that. If you'd like to follow along with behind the scenes photos of my progress, then please consider joining my channel by becoming a member. There's a join button below the video. Here's a look at the first time I explored forced perspective when I made a road vanish into the back scene. Until the roofs then, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.